The business environment today is marked by great changes in consumer desires, behavior, and lifestyles. To remain competitive and profitable in this dynamic market, you need to leverage the strategy of market segmentation. The different bases of market segmentation enable you to discover attractive opportunities in the market. Hi there, I'm Catherine Gaho from SBO Research. Thank you for tuning in to my channel, Elevators, where we offer elevating and empowering messages to help you grow in life, career, and business. In this video today, I'm going to talk about the eight bases of market segmentation and the benefits of including these in your business strategy. The last time I talked about the conditions for effective segmentation. So today the focus is on the basis, the eight bases. I will use examples and recent developments to show you how you can use this information to get an edge in the marketplace. The basis of market segmentation are factors that you can use to cluster customers into smaller groups of people who have similar characteristics or needs. You can then use a single marketing strategy to serve this group because of their similarities. You can do this through product differentiation, packaging, unique styling, promotional appeal, and distribution channels. This approach leads to significant increase in sales, which more than offsets the cost of segmentation. Now let's go straight to the eight bases of market segmentation. Do stay with me to the end to get the full benefit of this material. And do like this video and subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned. First is demographic segmentation. This is the most common and it involves dividing the market based on factors like age, gender, education, income, occupation and marital status. The main benefit of demographic segmentation is that it's cost effective and it mainly uses characteristics that are easy to assess. But some of the recent changes indicate the need to be a bit more open-minded. For example, while gender is considered a great distinguishing factor, changes in gender roles and behavior call for different strategies. For example, men have become users of cosmetics and skincare products. The supermarket shelf space for male grooming products has increased significantly in the last few years. Again, while age is considered a very useful factor for distinguishing market behavior for many products, whether it's food, beverages, movies and TV programs and the like, Today, marketers need to be open-minded and consider groups such as those who consider themselves new age elderly, who are older persons who consider themselves young at heart and have a lot of money to spend and are willing to spend it. On marital status, the growth in single households has led to a shift in shopping habits. This has created marketing opportunities for single serving of ready-made foods and small pack sizes of various products. In real estate, one bedroom houses and bed sitters are also increasing and they are targeted at the many single households. Now, with regard to income as a factor of market segmentation, it's complicated because it tells us a lot about the ability to buy that you have money but does not tell us your interest or willingness in buying. For example, a banker and a DJ may win some money or even inherit millions, but each of them is likely to spend the money in a different way because of differences in other factors like education and occupation. To overcome these gaps, demographic factors tend to be used in combination with others or to be used in combination together. So for example, you might say a target group may be described as um, single men aged 20 to 30 years with college education or single females or you could say married with children. Also income is combined with occupation and education to make it easier to assess the people's needs. The main limitation of demographic segmentation is that while it provides information on potential usage it does not explain the why or the reason for the consumer usage. The second is geographic segmentation, another simple and common one. Under geographic system, the market is divided based on location, 
region and factors like climate, population, population density, and the like. The assumption behind this is that people who live in the same area, say eastern, western or coastal region, tend to have similar needs and tastes and preferences that are unique to them. Some products do better in urban areas while others will win in rural areas. People's needs are also influenced to some extent by climate factors. Whether it's um, temperate, hot or humid and the like. Some products thrive in tropical areas. Think of anti-malarial products such as mosquito coils, chloroquine which has become a very major word recently and treated bed nets. These are more common in tropical areas where malaria is common. In contrast, people who live in uh, cold areas or when it's rainy, we all see, you know, salespeople and hawkers run out with umbrellas and sometimes warm coats. There are also differences in style between those who live in major metropolitan cities and small town dwellers. Third is psychographic segmentation. This refers to dividing the market based on factors that relate to consumers' motivation, perception, personality and attitudes. Psychographic studies look at the interests, values, opinions and activities and lifestyle of target consumers. This helps, this helps you to know your customer in a really deep way and you learn why they use your product. One challenge about psychographic factors is that um, they are not easy to identify. Unlike demographic factors, they have to be uncovered through research using projective techniques to reveal the not so obvious characteristic. In my company, SBO Research, this is one of the jobs that we do a lot for our clients. And we use these kind of techniques to help dig deeper to find the true reason why consumers choose one product or service instead of another. For instance, under personality factors, consumers may be divided based on whether they are extroverts or introverts, or whether they are compliant or aggressive. Under lifestyle, some are seen as conformists, while others are conservative, while others are innovators. Psychographic segmentation has been used by marketers of beverages, fast food, mobile phones, toothpaste, and clothing. Many times, psychographic and demographic variables are combined to create more powerful consumer descriptive profiles. The fourth is sociocultural segmentation. This involves dividing the market using information on cultural values, social class, and family life cycle stages. Like, you know, the newly married, young families, or with teenage children, or the empty nest where the children have left the home. And all these impact the behavior of consumers. Social class differences have been used a lot to segment banking clients, like we have premier banking, priority banking, we have gold card, and the like. And all these are efforts to target the upper class customers with unique services to match their needs. Cultural differences are particularly useful in international marketing, where beliefs, values, and customs impact target customers in a significant way in different countries. It also applies in countries where there is a large diversity of subcultures based on tribe, race, language, and religion. Like in Kenya, where we have so many tribes, people have sometimes different needs based on their ethnicity. I must say that politicians seem to know how to exploit this aspect much more than marketers in this particular environment. Number five is behavioral segmentation. In this approach, customers are grouped based on their actions and the attitudes that drive their behavior. You can consider shopping behavior, consumption patterns such as usage rate, customer loyalty, and timing. People can be divided based on the rate of usage, such as heavy users, medium users, and light users. Some markets, like the alcohol market and cigarettes too, are driven by heavy users, where a small group of consumers use the largest quantity of the products. In a situation where 20% of consumers use 
80% of the product, then different marketing strategies are required for each group, from promotion, communication, packaging and distribution and even pricing. This has seen loyal customers targeted with loyalty points in all manner of establishments, from supermarkets to pharmacies and drugstores. Airline frequent flyer programs are a good example of promoting customer loyalty. Now, sixth is use situation segmentation. This is based on the reason of use. Consumer groups are segmented based on situation or occasion of use. Some products are promoted for special occasions, such as Christmas, New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day. We also have, you know, birthdays and Valentine products that are targeted at specific occasions. The hotel and airline industries tend to factor time pressure in pricing. When you book well in advance, you get a better price. It's generally recognized that business travelers have less flexibility than leisure travelers, but they are also willing to pay higher prices for that accommodation. Now the seventh is benefit segmentation. This approach focuses on the benefits sought by the different customers. The question is what are the most important benefits for different groups of customers? For example, in the beauty industry, there are skincare products for the relief of dry skin, oily skin and the like. Then there are makeup products to serve different parts. Then there are products for moisturizing, there are products for beautifying and the like. In the car industry, benefits like convenience, prestige, economy and value for money are a key focus. You can take the cars on the road, any road at any time and you will see different cars that are meant to deliver value in terms of prestige and others in terms of economy. In the toothpaste market, which is so interesting, there are those who are considered as social segment, like those who want whiter teeth, they are considered the social segment. They are social people. Then the anti-cavity, those who go for anti-cavity are called anxious segment because they tend to be more anxious, they worry, they fear to see the dentist, they fear cavities. And so the communication to those people is very carefully targeted. And then of course there is even the sensitive teeth segment and many others. The eighth is hybrid segmentation. This involves combining any of the other segmentation bases such as demographic together with psychographic or geographic and demographic to create geodemographic segmentation. And the whole idea behind this is to overcome the gaps and the weaknesses of the other segmentation variables. Now to sum up, the eight bases of market segmentation are demographic segmentation, Second is geographic segmentation. Third is psychographic segmentation. Number four is social cultural segmentation. Number five is benefit segmentation. The sixth is use situation segmentation. And the seventh is behavioral segmentation. And finally, number eight is hybrid segmentation, where you combine two or more bases of segmentation. Do like this video and share it with someone you think might benefit from it. Thank you for staying with me and all the best. We all need to elevate our mindset at this time.